Good morning. Today I am reading two passages for, for you. Uh, the theme is Feed My Sheep. And the first reading comes from Luke chapter 2, as from verse 8. The shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, watching over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news of great joy that it will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. And the heading is, Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to integrate the type of death by which John or Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now the talk, as I said to you, the devotion is about feed my sheep. Our sheep were often used as sacrifices in the ancient times. Such a sheep or lamb had to be without blemish to be sacrificed to God, especially during Passover. Besides our limited knowledge about sheep, shepherding was once upon a time, especially during the times of the patriarchs, an important and noble occupation. We will only mention some, like Abel, Moses, Abraham, and one of the greatest of all, David. He was the youngest son and was therefore given the menial job to look after the sheep. That is where he had to be fetched when God chose to have Samuel anoint David as the king to replace Saul. However, over time, the work of shepherding was done to, by people of lower social standing. They were sometimes thieves, outcasts, slaves, dirty people on the lowest rank of the social list. They also did not smell very good. We must remember these folks lived with sheep, slept on the ground with them, 
carried the weak lambs, cleaned sores and fleece of the sheep, and cared for the hooves of these animals. They had to build overnight shelters using stone or thorn bushes. They would then sleep in the opening of the shelter to protect the sheep from straying and most importantly from predators. Sheep are rather stupid animals. If one sheep started wandering in a certain direction, the others would follow blindly, even if it meant following him over a cliff. They were easily frightened and would not even drink water from a running stream. They had to be led to where the water ran quietly. They knew the voice of their shepherds and would follow him, knowing he would lead them to food and water. Now the question comes to mind, why did God choose to bring the glad news of the birth of the greatest shepherd of all, the saviour of the world, to shepherds in a field somewhere far away from Jerusalem? Why were they to hear the news firsthand from the angels in a bright light when there were such important people closer to where Jesus was born? Jesus' birth, the good news, was given to outcasts who eagerly went to investigate the miracle. And where was this baby found? Not in a rich home or even a room at the inn, but in a stable. That was more than likely a cave cut out in rocks to house animals. These facts all pointed to why and to whom Jesus came to earth. Jesus came to the poor, the outcasts, the unclean, blind, lame, prostitutes, tax collectors, and also the learned people of the scriptures of those days. Who would listen to him? Some of the answers are found in the fact that all Jesus' life, even the announcement of his birth, was a confirmation of Jesus' life purpose. He came to heal the sick, not the healthy. He referred to himself many times as the good shepherd who lays his life down for his sheep. What eventually happened was he was tortured and crucified on the cross for the sins of the world. One of Jesus' disciples in particular suffered deep personal grief, regret and guilt after he had denied Jesus three times before his crucifixion. With deep compassion and affirmation, Peter was reinstated by Jesus after his resurrection. The renewed purpose was spelt out to Peter by the three orders Jesus gave him. He was to become a good shepherd like his master was, someone who would feed the lambs, the young converts by his teaching, guidance and leadership. He was also not to neglect the other sheep, the growing and the more mature sheep. As Jesus' followers, more than 2,000 years later, let us join Peter in recommitting our lives to the calling we also have received from the Lord. This year, we have the opportunity to celebrate Jesus' birth with renewed enthusiasm, gratitude, and compassion. His challenge to us is to step into his mission to transform the whole world. We do this when we obey him in reaching out to the lost, the lonely, and the marginalized in our society. As we enter the Advent season, actually at all times, let us notice the people living on the fringes of society, those who, according to others, do menial tasks, like cleaning the streets, the hospitals and homes. They collect our trash, clean cars, and the saddest of all, many are just sitting, begging for someone to notice them and give them work and something to eat. 
Let us strive to be kinder to those at the cashier's till, the waiters, the car guards, the lonely old person whose family is far away and they are left all alone, even on such a special day like Christmas. If COVID has taught us anything, is that our time is limited and that the need to reach out to a lost and dying world is at least as great as it has ever been. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, yes, you came to earth to save me too. I am not too unimportant or insignificant or even too rich for you to love. You never forget us, always cares for us, just like a sheep and shepherd cares for the lambs. Thank you, Father God, for sending your beloved Son to come and show us by example how to live. May this time and every other day be filled with the joy that only your presence in our hearts can bring. Amen.